When thinking about how to generate the enolate of a ketone, we run into a selectivity issue pretty early in thinking about this process in ketones that have different groups linked to their two alpha carbons. So for example, here, we've got a cyclopentanone with two distinct alpha carbons. One bears a methyl group and the other does not. And so we have two possible positions that could be deprotonated in the presence of a base to generate an enolate. The strength of the base that we use to deprotonate has a profound effect on which position is deprotonated. When we use a very strong base that reacts irreversibly and completely, something like sodium hydride with the very basic H- anion that generates H2 gas when it deprotonates, or a sterically hindered amide base, something with an anionic nitrogen. The most famous example of this is lithium diisopropyl amide, or LDA. When we use one of these very strong bases, deprotonation occurs selectively at the less substituted carbon. Because the site of deprotonation is driven by kinetics, this less substituted enolate is what we call the kinetic enolate. It's the enolate that forms more rapidly. And it's the favored and major product when we use a very strong base to deprotonate. Either sodium hydride or LDA works great for this purpose. We can also use relatively weak bases to form enolates. The most common examples are hydroxide, OH- and alkoxides, OR-. These bases, which in a pKa sense are weaker bases than enolates, generate the more substituted enolates selectively. And because these bases are weaker than enolates, they generate the enolate reversibly in generally very small quantities because these reactions are generally favored in the reverse direction. Enolates prefer to deprotonate water, for example, not the reverse. Hydroxide deprotonating a ketone is less favorable than enolate deprotonating the conjugate acid or water. Because this reaction is reversible and is generated under equilibrium conditions, this is called the thermodynamic enolate. It's the more stable of the two because it involves a more substituted carbon-carbon double bond. And it's generated selectively in the presence of a base weaker than an enolate, most commonly hydroxide or alkoxides. So in summary, if we want to generate the less substituted enolate of a ketone with two different alpha carbons, we use a very strong kinetic base, sodium hydride or LDA. If we want to generate the more substituted enolate selectively, we use a relatively weak base, hydroxide or alkoxide. Now one thing you may be wondering about at this point is with hydroxide or alkoxide, the base is weaker than an enolate. So it doesn't seem possible for hydroxide to deprotonate a ketone. And in fact, it's thermodynamically disfavored. This means that at equilibrium, we have much more of the starting carbonyl compound, ketone in this case, than we have of the enolate. It is still possible to drive the enolate to complete reactivity even when we use a base that's weaker than the enolate itself. The way we do this is by taking advantage of Le Chatelier's principle. If we generate the enolate under conditions in which it's rapidly consumed, we can convert all of a carbonyl compound over to a substituted product by generating small amounts of the enolate at a time. And I wanted to show you how this works with a simulation. So the situation with a ketone plus hydroxide and an enolate might look something like this. The ketone and hydroxide are on the A side, the reactant side, and the enolate and water are on the B side. And so A is the favored side. There's much more A than B at equilibrium within this system. But the way we drive everything over to the B side is by reacting B, reacting the enolate with an electrophile. Watch what happens when all of the enolate is consumed through reaction with an electrophile. We go from 25 molecules of enolate to none, and the system is now out of equilibrium. And so more hydroxide can now come along and deprotonate the ketone to generate more enolate. And you can see that we've generated more enolate, which can now react with more electrophile to, again, kick us out of equilibrium and generate yet more of the enolate. So even though the deprotonation is thermodynamically disfavored, provided we generate the enolate in the presence of an electrophile, we can drag all of that ketone over to product. You can imagine that if we kept doing this, eventually all of the A, all of the neutral ketone and hydroxide would get converted to 
enolate, and ultimately substituted product, and water. 